one who comes in the name of the Lord. And you say, Hosanna in the highest. I may say that again at some point, <laughs> just as a fair warning. Welcome to St. Luke for this Palm Sunday. I have a, a couple small instructions. Um, for, we will be doing a processional. When we do the processional, you'll, you'll know. Uh, get up, come to the center aisle. You can stay in here too. The organ will still be playing. Uh, but if you, if you are able, get up, come to the center aisle. Um, if you're on this side, we can go either way you want to, really. But if you're on this side, come down this aisle, go out that door outside. Um, we will be singing the hymn as we go. You might be able to hear the, hear the organ. Try your best. When we come back in, we'll, we'll start again with verse 1. We're going to process out this way with your palms and come back in the back. Or if you're on this side, you're going to go out through the office. If you've never been in the office, you get to check out the office on your way through. Um, <laughs> Go out through that door, then out the office door and around, and Walt will lead you, or Sixth Measure will lead you that direction, uh, that way. There, there were a couple trip hazards, but yesterday on our work day, we, we, we ground down the concrete, so it's a little safer to go that way now. So that will happen immediately after, uh, after I read the, the processional gospel. We will go right into the processional. The Holy Gospel according to the 11th chapter of Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Please rise as you are able. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that had been cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the gospel of the Lord. Feel free to bring your hymnals. It's hymn number 344 in the back part of your hymnal.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Holy house, and for all who offer their hear their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. You may be seated. Hosanna in the highest. 
Hosanna. Do you know what that means? It's kind of a, a big word that sounds really fun when you say it. Say it really loud. Hosanna! Hosanna! A little louder. Hosanna! Hosanna. Yeah, Hosanna in the highest. It actually means save us. Did you know that? It means save us. So people were calling out to Jesus saying save us because there were a lot of things going on in that time and they thought Jesus was going to be their earthly king and Jesus came to help us with so many things um, but it was more of a spiritual relationship that he was going to found a heavenly kingdom but everyone thought he was going to be the the king of the day and when he went up to heaven they're like wait where did Jesus go I thought you were going to be our king um I have something really really cool to show you here there's something that was written in 2022 and can you read it here? What does it say? Someone will come to find a red rose and give their rose to grace. During this service, someone will come and find a red rose and give the rose to grace. Oh, thank you. Hi, Clark. Good to see you, bud. Oh, you know what? This looks like it was dated in 2022. How many years ago is that? Two years ago. Hey, this is something called a prophecy. Can you say prophecy? It's something that me it means it was written before and then it came to pass. And Jesus came riding on a donkey and it was told 700 years ago in the book of Isaiah in, in the Bible that Jesus would come riding on a donkey. Jesus came down to the people riding on a donkey. Are donkeys? Like horses, kind of? But they're different. How are they different? Uh, they're smaller. They're smaller. They're usually gray. Remember when PD gave us a bunch of donkeys and he handed them all out? Donkeys are kind of not a very um, cool, animal. cool animal. Yeah, that's one way of saying it. We love donkeys. But... Jesus wanted to show his humility, that he came to serve us. He came to help us and love us. So this is a big word. This is a big concept to understand. And so I just wanted to, to touch on it a little bit. But the Bible um, has lots of things in it that said Jesus is going to come. Jesus is going to help humanity, help save us, help give us um, a way to live according to how God designed us. So that's a lot. We'll talk about it more. But... <laughs> I tried to explain prophecy today, and that's what came out. So let's pray and ask God to give us clarity. Dear Jesus, thank you for coming to earth and um, being our Savior, being our Lord, giving us a way to understand how to live this life. And we ask that you give us understanding of how to love others the way you loved us. In Jesus' name, amen. You're going to get to do Sunday school in the MEB today. I knew they'd be more excited about it than you. <laughs> what is it? In the, in the education building. The new building, the brand new building. Don't mess it up, please. <laughs> no writing on the walls. Let him come near to me. 
Behold, the Lord God will help me. Who is he that shall condemn me? Thus ends the first reading. Psalm is Psalm 31, 9 through 16, beginning with the New Testament side. reading today comes from Philippians 2 verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in, Jesus, in Christ Jesus 
who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that all the name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bend, in heaven and on in, and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Here ends the second reading. Please stand for just the gospel acclamation. I'll explain in a minute. be seated for a moment. Well, for more than a moment. Um, we are going to do a reading of the Passion, and you all, I'm glad you all have showed up for this casting moment. I'm going to be uh, a casting director now. Um, I would like some actors. I have already set up comfortable chairs for you to sit in when you're not doing your parts. Um, first of all, I need Jesus. Raise your hand if you'd like to be in, in the show this morning. I need a Jesus. I got a Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Well, I'm not having enough hands raised, but this might be. I don't get to choose. Um, I need a, a pilot. Oh, Jesus. So, Jesus, you're going to be standing behind the altar, as, it, uh, as is appropriate. So, that's yours. Uh, right now. Come on, pilot. Pilot, all the bad guys are going to be over there. So, pilot, pilot gets to be over there. I need, a, I need a Peter, Apostle Peter. It can be male or female, by the way. This is, I don't, I, I'm not, I'm not going to... Uh, Apostle Peter. Come on, Apostle Peter. You're going to sit on that side over there. You're going to be on the good side, the good person side. Uh, I need another bad guy. High priest. There you go. Oh, there's another bad guy. He actually gets to go on the, on the good guy side. Confusing. Uh, Judas. Only has two lines. Come on, Judas. <laughs> now, are oh, you going to say right over there? Right over there. Well, I mean, it's disciples. I, I think Judas is good, but that's a theological discussion for another time. Um, now, the last two, you can stay where you are. So if you really wanted to act, you're like, I don't want to walk up there and climb those stairs. You can still act because these two, I'm going to come to you with a microphone when the time comes. So I need someone to be a centurion. Okay, centurion. You're going to make it, I'm going to, I will come to you with a microphone at the right time. And I need someone who gets to do two parts, gets to be a servant girl and the bystander. Servant girl and bystander, they are. You're in the same row, so it's perfect. I can just hand you the microphone when the time comes. And lest you think that because you didn't raise your hand, you're not in the thing. <laughs> can someone, can you help me? Can someone help me hand these out? Can you help me hand these out? So there are parts in there that are, I actually need one of those <laughs> myself. There are parts in there that are bold, and that's when everybody gets to say something. So uh, be loud. Show me your incredible acting ability when you say those parts out loud. Are we ready? Everybody got that? You ready, Jesus? Yeah. yeah. Slightly typecast? I'm yes. <laughs> OK. This is the Holy Gospel according to Mark the 14th and 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. 
The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, this is everybody. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard. And she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, And they scolded her, but Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and the man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went into the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and say to him one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to mount the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You all will become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. 
And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for a testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, But even on this point their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power, and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy. So the guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming herself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed, and the servant girl on seeing him began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while the bystanders again said to Peter, But he began to curse and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, you say so. Then the chief priest accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further reply so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they, they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with this man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, 
Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him. Then they struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him uh, and shaking their heads and saying, In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice. Eloi, Eloi, lima sabachthani. Which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, and put it on a stick, and gave it for him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James the younger and of Joseph and Salome. They used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who would come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was a day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thank you, actors. those I have um, there's nothing that says a sermon in there but I'm but I'm gonna fool you and do a little a little a little quick commentary so um, in a lot of churches there's this there's been this debate um, maybe for the last decade or a little bit longer um, in our planning kind of stuff uh, documents our, our resources we have to plan for for this Sunday um, this is the first year that, that there was only one option. Normally it says, would you like to do 
Palm Sunday or Passion Sunday? Would you like to read the whole Passion, or would you like to just tell the story of Palm Sunday about the procession into Jerusalem? And, and there are ways you can, can kind of combine the two. This year it just said, here, do both. And I've, I've done this before, like we've done today, where we kind of combine. And the argument is, well, we've got to read the Passion because people aren't going to, there a lot of people don't attend. This is not a guilt trip ahead of time. Um, people, a lot of people don't attend Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday. So you go from celebration, the celebration from entering into Jerusalem, to the celebration of Easter, and you miss the tough stuff in the middle. So the argument has been, well, we're going we're gonna to force the whole story of the Passion, all the tough stuff on you, on Palm Sunday so you can hear that. And some people say, ah, they'll come. I know churches, pastor friends of mine, I have a lot of pastor friends, who are like, no, no, they'll come. We'll just, we'll do, we won't do that on, on Palm Sunday. We'll just tell the Palm Sunday story and celebrate, and then the people will come on Thursday and Friday. I, I can kind of see both sides, right? But I think we need to hear this story as much as possible. The whole story. And there's a couple reasons for that. What Jesus is doing, his entire ministry, but especially this week of Passover, is speaking truth to power. He's speaking truth to power. He's telling the powers of the world that what you're doing is wrong. It's not just. It hurts people. And I think sometimes we forget that what he was doing leading up the cross was talking about speaking truth to the injustice in the world. Jesus is telling the people of the world that know things like genocide in Gaza is not God's plan, it's evil. War in Ukraine and other places over usually egotistical reasons is not good, it's evil. The shortest verse in the Bible is Jesus wept. And unfortunately, I think that Jesus is still weeping. I think it's good that we read the story of the Passion because Jesus in this story is telling in, in real tangible ways all of the, the known systems of power of the time that that doesn't work in the long run. Power will corrupt every single time. I think we need to hear the story of the Passion to be reminded that Jesus was telling all the powers of the world. For him, that was the Romans, the kings, and the people in, and the, the leaders of the church, sort of three types of, of leadership, all of the leadership of the world at every single level, that the way they operate in the end is unjust and cruel, especially to the people that are the most disadvantaged, that have the least privilege, that have the least rights. And those same systems of power still exist today. We like to sort of sanitize and minimize and deflect and say, but not, not me, not here, not in our country, not in our denomination. The same system still exists here. Injustice and inequality exist everywhere. And just denying it doesn't make it go away. So I think reading the, reading the passion, and we'll hear it again <laughs> later this week, is reminding us that through, journey, through the journey of Jesus, uh, through Holy Week, through this Passover, to the cross, is more than just that journey. It's about standing up to, to the powers of the time. I think, sadly, we still need to be reminded that 2,000 years later. So listen carefully to this story again and again and again. I think we need to hear it. There's a reading I found online. It's up on the screen. I'm going to read it to you out loud. We want the war horse. Jesus rides a donkey. We want the bird of prey. The Holy Spirit descends as a dove. We want the militia. Jesus calls fishermen, tax collectors, women, and children. We want the courtroom. Jesus sets a table. We want the gavel, Jesus washes feet. We want to take up swords, Jesus takes up a cross. We want the empire, Jesus brings the kingdom of God. We want the nation, Jesus calls the church. Yeah. I need to look at my, I can't quite see it. 
It's my fault. Sorry. We want the roaring lion. God comes as a slaughtered lamb. We keep trying to arm God. God keeps trying to disarm us. I think reading the Passion is speaking truth to power then. That's what, that's what Jesus was doing. Whatever else you might say about, about Jesus' ministry, his teaching, he was telling the powers of, of the world that they needed to, to lead in ways that were just and fair to everyone. And they weren't then, and they aren't now. So hearing that story is really important as much as possible because we can still speak truth to power today. Amen. We will sing the hymn of the day, Jesus, I Will Ponder Now. It's hymn number 345. Please rise as you're able.
us pray. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of the creation, and the world in need. Blessed one, today the church sings glad hosannas as we enter Holy Week. Prepare us to, be bear, to bear witness to Christ's suffering and death endured for our sake. Gather your people around the cross and comfort us with the resurrection hope. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Renew your good creation and protect the balance of life on earth. Encourage the work of foresters, scientists, arborists, park gardeners, and river keepers. We pray for the health of pollinating insects, songbirds, and native plants. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Establish peace and justice among the nations. Hold to account any with authority to judge others. Grant that courts, legislatures, and local governments will serve with integrity and compassion. Hear us, O God. Bring hope to any who feel forsaken and forgotten. Make a way for refugees and asylum seekers. Reunite families enduring separation. We pray for any who are incarcerated, institutionalized, or in foster care, that they may know your love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Touch those who are ill, in mourning or struggling in any way with your, heal with your healing, comforting, and compassionate hand. We especially pray for Ruth Egan and family, Emily Budd, Olivia Weber, Marlene Custer, Lois Bertelson and family, Michael Masterson, Gwen Carpenter, John Jensen, Karen Ferentz, Lori Peterson, Mary Lou Robson, and Sally Hedman. Merciful God. The prayer. Holy one, we pray that you bless the work of our missionaries, Julia and Vincent Laoli in Kenya, Dorcas Wong in Beijing, Ruth, Luke, Yahia, Alasa, Daoud, Hadassah, and Gideon Schroeder in the Philippines. And we pray for and with our neighbors from a neighbor praying for their family to find peace, strength, and determination, from Belinda asking God to give her the needed courage, from Lucas praying for good grades in school, for Clark and Brandy as they face a huge mountain in their path. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share the peace with one another.
us pray. Oh God, each time I pray. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for their forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray the prayer that you yourself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We'll commune uh, coming down the center aisle. Uh, I will give you a wafer um, or a, uh, we also have uh, gluten-free wafers available. If you'd like a goldfish, even adults could have a goldfish too. I'm not going to turn you down. Uh, someone will be standing to mine or Walt's side with uh, the chalices. The larger ceramic chalice has wine in it. The smaller golden colored chalice has grape juice in it. Uh, we, uh, if you'd like to just have a blessing, you can do that as well. We believe very strongly that all people without exception are welcome at this table. Those of you commuting from home, uh, body and blood of Christ to be uh, given and shed for you. You may take your communion at this time. <laughs>
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Generous God, at this table we have tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. Do we have... Oh, I knew. I saw it. I saw it come up. I have shockingly few announcements today, so that's good news. Uh, we have a time of fellowship. If you, if you are a visitor especially and you didn't know about that, it's in Kurtz Hall, which is right across the courtyard here. There are usually donuts and coffee, and feel free to join us. Also this week we have a Monday-Thursday service that is in Kurtz Hall. It starts at 6. There's a meal provided. You're probably, probably going to hear more about that. Since I jump on announcements. Um, and then Friday, Good Friday service is in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. And then, of course, Easter Sunday. Uh, there is probably another announcement about that, too, that I won't jump on. So, <laughs> thank you. Uh, I know we have big news right here, so come on. Well, we're going to let Maggie go first. Oh, Maggie go first, okay. okay. We have a wonderful service and meal prepared. We are preparing for... Um, Monday, Thursday, which we are commemorating the Last Supper and the First Communion. And um, you all know the wonderful uh, Leonardo da Vinci uh, fresco in Milan with the, uh, for the Last Supper. But you may not know one that's in Cusco, Peru, in the cathedral. Can you see what's on that beautiful gold plate? Well, it's a guinea pig. <laughs> because that was what the Incans and the, the natives ate. So that's what they put in their beautiful plate in Cusco. But we are not having the sacrificial lamb, and we are not having guinea pig. We're not having guinea pig? We are not. Oh, come you can on. bring your own, we'll pet them, but we're not eating them. 
But we are having roasted chicken and tater tots and mac and cheese and a wonderful green salad and wonderful desserts. And so we will see you then. I have another announcement, though. See if I can get this on with the microphone. I was really <laughs> looking forward to the guinea pig. Sunday morning, either at 8.30 or 8.45. It's been both places. We'll feed you when you come. We're going to have a wonderful breakfast in Kurtz Hall before our Easter service. We are having uh, sausages, scrambled eggs. We're having um, uh, cinnamon rolls that Walt is making. And uh, do come. You can come any time until quarter to, uh, Quarter to ten, you'll want to get into church by then. But do come on Easter Sunday. It'll be a wonderful lunch. Oh, I need one. I could use some more help. On Thursday and on Sunday. Thursday, if you want to come at five and help us set up, uh, help not set up, but help us with the meal. And on um, Sunday, if you want to come at 7.30, that'd be great. And if you can especially stay after and clean up, that would be after church, come in and help clean up Kurt's Hall. That'd be terrific. Thank you, Maggie, for all that you do and your team. <laughs> well, guess what's coming next Sunday, including the wonderful Easter celebration. It's also the first fifth Sunday of 2024. Woohoo! <laughs> Dang, all right. So, uh, we have a group of how many going to the youth gathering? Twelve. Plus how many adults? Four. So, uh, we, uh, the witness team has designated our fifth Sunday special offering to help support those who are attending the youth gathering. So, please read the announcement in the bulletin. And we also usually and uh, do encourage you to give above your normal giving. So thank you very much, and God bless this holy week. Mike. Here's the mic, Mike. <laughs> All right, everybody. I think you know what's coming, so drum roll, please. <laughs> Too much. Oh, there it is. Now, I don't know if everybody can see real well back there, but here's the line we're trying to get to. Here's where we are now. So, very, very close. Very close. Since last week, about 60,000 more pledges. 60,000. Yeah. Yep, so we're about 19,000. Uh, yep. 19, yep. Okay, so uh, a couple weeks ago you heard me talk about chipping away at the block of marble to find the statue of David in it. You know. <laughs> yeah, I can clearly see the outline of David forming here, and uh, we're so close. And thank you all for your generosity. It's just overwhelming and it's humbling to see such a response from the congregation and the community. Um, so I would just ask, uh, if you haven't yet, please prayerfully consider pledging. If you pledge and feel you could take a step further and want to re-pledge, please feel free to do so. And we're gonna get to this 300,000 and we're going to relaunch ACP, and it's going to be incredible. And we're going to have kids all over the campus, and uh, I think that's what we're here for. I think we're given this space in a residential area off the busy streets for kids, and that's what we should fill it up with. So thank you for that. Um, there's one other uh, in your bulletin. You'll see um, Mary has uh, put in the um, ACP director um, job description. So we have that posted on indeed.com. If you know somebody who fits that description, or you are that person, please let us know. Um, 
we've been screening uh, applicants. There's been many, and uh, we'll start interviewing them. And, uh, soon, within the next, we're very interviewing, soon. interviewing within the next soon week or and two. Very soon. Mm -hmm. All right, that's it. Thank you. Okay, I have my list of announcements. Hi, Pastor Dan. Hi. I don't have any quits today. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Um, thank you all for the donations of all the furry friends and plushies this past month. If you have one sitting next to you, make sure to give it one more hug before this week so that they can go out and be a blessing on Easter. I, I'm, I'm so glad that you got the gopher. <laughs> yeah, true. And with that, we have a lot going on for the Easter week that hasn't been mentioned yet. Uh, Build a Butterfly is doing its last Sunday, so during fellowship time, stop by, Build a Butterfly. Make sure we have many of those beautiful creations to put all around the sanctuary, and that will be done during the Easter Vigil which is at 3 p.m. on March 30th. That's the day before Easter. And all of our youth and families are invited to attend that event and help us decorate with balloons and all of the butterflies that you all have made and really turn the sanctuary into a celebration space. With Easter, we want to make sure that the sanctuary is full, and so on the back rack where you pick up your bulletins, there are invitation cards that you can pick up and give away to neighbors or friends that will invite them to all of our Easter events. Uh, there are about a hundred of those cards back there, so I'm hoping they are all gone, and that you all are be very busy and friendly bees inviting people. Finally, after Easter, on April 7th, the youth are hosting our second fundraiser for the ELCA Youth Gathering trip. That is going to be brunch after church with bingo and a silent auction bake sale. That is on April 7th, so bring your competitive spirit for bingo and your hungry stomachs. And the final announcement I have is one I don't think Pastor Dan knows about. Can you come stand right here? Yeah. Do do you know what do you know what tomorrow is? My day off. Yeah. Well, yes. But did you know tomorrow will be your six month anniversary oh, of working here at St. Luke? Thank you for being a blessing and thank you for being the pastor that we all have needed. Thank you. I think I'm done. Awesome. Please rise as you're able for our sending him beneath the cross of Jesus.
Beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, renewed. God bless you and keep you, shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. Amen. Our worship continues. Our service has just begun. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.